afternoon, everybody. So today I'm going to talk about uh, some findings of our study about planetary system. And before my science part of my talk, I want to introduce, take this opportunity to introduce my institute. I'm from Nanjing. Nanjing is in the east of, middle east of China, and is famous as is uh, one of the four great Asian cap capital in China. And uh, Nanjing has Yangtze River, Purple Mountain, and also Nanjing University. And uh, this is the old campus, and uh, there are many traditional buildings and uh, many trees in the downtown. And uh, that's the new campus with many modern buildings and uh, some small mountain and the rivers. And in the top of the, the mountain, there is an observatory for teaching. And uh, on the other side of the mountain, at, fo at the foot, there is our astronomy building. And we have 40 faculties and uh, 180 un undergrad students and um, 80 grad students. And we have many research fields, including solar physics, energy, astronomy, galaxy and star formation, celestial, celestial dynamics, and astrometry, space science, and the exoplanet. I'm in the exoplanet group, and which has four faculties, including me, and nine graduate students. OK, back to the real talk. Mm. The talk is mainly about the paper published recently, and uh, we combined the Kepler data and the LAMOS data, and uh, we solved uh, a puzzle about the uh, exoplanet orbit. So this is the outline. I'm going to tell you about what's the puzzle and how can LAMOS and Kepler solve the puzzle, and what's the answer of the puzzle and the implication of the puzzle. So what's the puzzle? In our solar system, there are two basic effects is all the planet, there's the eight solar planet, they are in the the orbit are nearly in the same plane and they are the shape of the orbit is near circular. And this motivated Kant and Laplace to propose the nebulous scenario for planet formation. And the, this scenario developed into the modern theory and all the what we call the standard model for planet formation. However, the standard model faced a number of challenges um, since, the dis since the discovery of exoplanets. And uh, the fast growing of, of exoplanets is driven by two techniques. One technique is the radio, sorry, is the radio velocity survey, and the other technique is the transit survey, such as the Kepler mission. So one of the important puzzle is about the, the shape of the exoplanet. So the radio velocity survey tell you find that many of the exoplanets they have they are commonly on eccentric orbit. The mean the mean the mean eccentricity is about 0.3. It's very in contrast to the solar system, the near near circular orbit in the solar system. So the question is, what's the common outcomes of planet formation? So or is it our solar system is special or, or outlier? So the key to answer the question is to measure the eccentricity of Kepler planet. Kepler have, 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 has found a lot of planet, but most of them, we don't know their orbit shape. So how to measure the eccentricity, how to know the eccentricity from a transit? So I, I, I draw a cartoon here, and this, this cartoon shows the, the, edge, the, the edge on of transit and the, the face on of transit. And this is the uh, standard case, or, or special case, is the, the orbit of the planet is, is circular, and the, the transit is across the, the center of star. That is a very important, 
very important observable in the transit is the duration of the transit. Here I, for a special case, I call it T0. T0 can be simply calculated by two times of the radius of a star over the velocity of the, of the orbit. So it's a very simple function of, of the orbit period and the, the density of the, the star. So we use the, the you, you just need to use the, the Kepler law. For a very general case is if the, the, the shape, orbit shape is not circular and the, the transit is not happen, um, it's not crossing the, the center of star, then the, the general duration T, it, it depends on the impact parameter, the, it's all depend on the, the inclination and the, all the eccentricity and the orientation. So the Lamos contribution is Lamos provide the measurement of the mean, the mean is mean density of the the, the host star. So let me talk about the Lamos. Lamos is a the full name is Large Sky Area Multiple Object Fiber Spectroscopy Telescope. So the most unique feature of LAMOS is it has 4,000 fibers. So it can, so you can get a um, thousand of spectra for for thousand star. The initial goal of LAMOS is to to do some electro actual galactic survey and to do cosmology. However. After ten, over 10 years mm, mm, of the, build, the building process of LAMOS, the, the, the background of the, of the Beijing mm, is growing as the growing of the city. So, so, so sorry, so sorry, customers. So we, can, we, we need to, we have to give up the very faint target. So, and the fox on our Milky Way. And we, so we use LAMOS to, to follow up the Kepler field star, the, the Kepler field target. In the Kepler field, there are, there are 20,000 or no, no, 200,000, 200,000 Kepler targets. And the most of them, we, we don't know their basic, basic property very well because they do not have spectral um, measurement. So LAMOS can tell you about, can, can, have, can, can take the spectral uh, observation and can tell you about the, the property very well, such as the, the, the mass of the star, the radius of a star, because this is very crucial to ca characterize the, the, the planet. Okay, so let's see the, the quality of the, the data from LAMOS. So, here I show the, the comparison between the stellar metallicity provided by LAMOS and uh, versus the, pro, the result from other high-resolution high spectral results. So we, we see the consistency is very well and with very low, with very small um, systematic trend and uh, some small uh, dispersion. And the similar is to the surface gravity of the star, star log G, the compression is also very well. And uh, the compression between LAMOS and the astro seismology is even better. And uh, in contrast, if you compare the LAMOS result to the input catalog of Kepler, you, you, you can see the input catalog has a very large uh, systematic trend and the larger dispersion, the, the uncertainty is very large. So, from this comparison, we, we see that the LAMOS is reliable and uh, is a very, the, the improvement is very significant. Okay, then using the LAMOS uh, um, parameter, we computed, we, can, we calculated the mean density of the star, the star and uh, the typical uncertainty is about 40%, 14%. I put the LAMOS contribution, the mean eccentricity to the equation, and we can calculate the, the ratio of the T, B, 
t over t0. And so in the left side of the e e equation is observable, and the, the right side is the is an equation about some free parameter that's a model. So in this equation, we cannot solve because this one equation and sorry, one equation and the many unknowns. So we cannot solve the eccentricity individually. Uh, but for a, a large sample, we can we can figure out the, the distribution of the eccentricity by fitting the the distribution of the of the ratio. So. Here I show the, the result and the, the answer. So combine the Lamo sample and the, the Kepler sample, we got uh, a nearly 700 pan candidates, and we divide them into two, two, cat two categories. One is the single transiting system. The other one is the multiple transiting system. And for the multiple transiting system, we, mm, here I show is the, that's the, the Cumulated distribution of the t over t zero uh, for different models, dif assume these are different eccentricity and uh, inclination distributions, and also the obser observation, and also the, the best fit. So in the right panel is the the best fit and also the the confident level of the of the fitting. So we see from this fitting, we see that the the Kepler multiples, they are, they on average are in near circular orbit and a very coplanar um, the orbit, very low inclination. So it's very similar to the solar system. And for the single sensing system, we find that uh, the the eccentricity is is quite large. It's nearly 0.3. However, we find that the, the, even the best fit cannot fit very, very well between one and two here. So we, mo we are motivated to fit two population for two population two population model for the singles. Here we assume that in the okay, in, in, thank you, we, in, in the single population there's a, there's an underlying population that that is. A, the same as the multiples, because that's a very natural assumption. Because the single, the capital singles, you observe a single is maybe they are real multiple pair system. Just because you meet, you just get your capital see see only one transiting um, planet. So and then we 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 fitted a two two free parameter. Two free parameter is the the fraction of the. Of the other hot fraction and uh, the mean eccentricity of the other hot fraction, and we find that the although the although the, the mean eccentricity is quite high for the hot, hot population, and uh, is is still a minor um, a minor component, and about twenty percent. So what's the implication for the result? So <coughs> so we always result find that the, the a so-called eccentric dichotomy. So it's the actual planet is two population. One is the dynamic hot, the other one is the dynamic cold. And uh, the majority is the dynamic cold population. And it may, this dichotomy may, may, may help to pin down the, <coughs> may help to pin down the initial condition for planet formation and uh, also may provide insight to the dynamic evolution uh, for the prime system, and also we we find that there is a common pattern inside and inside and outside solar system. So here this plot is the shows the mean inclination and the mean eccentricity for different systems. So this three is the moon system in our solar system, and this is the small body system in our solar system, and this is a solar planet, eight solar planet, and this is the Kepler multiples. So we see all of them follow the same linear <coughs> linear re relation between mean eccentricity and the mean inclination, and the solar system is so, is very close to the the solar system is very close to the mo the actual planet. So from this angle of view, we we, we see that the, the solar system are not an outlier, or a be so solar system may be typical. From the angle of view of the the orbit, 
and the, the implication for the habitability. So we find that a lot of them, the, the circular objects are very common, so they maybe have a very, very important implication for the habitability. Because if the eccentricity is very, very large, then the planet can travel in and out of the habitable zone. So such a varying temperature situation can cause the planet not to be not habitable. OK, that's my summary of the, the talk. So the eccentric dichotomy, common relation, and the prevalence of circular orbit. Thank you very much.